Well, let me talk to you. Yeah. Welcome to the Those Two Geeks podcast. Yeah. I'm Matthew. We're here with Joe and Alex. Yeah. And let me tell you, everybody today is going to be talking about Backlash. That's right. We are back again with another preview episode where those two geeks, we are going to give our three picks for WWE Backlash, which is airing today as we're recording in Lyon, France. Uh, Alex, Joe, as always, thank you for letting me the M in your jam session today. Oh, my God. You see, this is why we, we can't do intros anymore. He's, he's too good at intros. <laughs> no why, prep. Why we're, we're so good at like, just not doing an intro, I guess. Um, yeah. You're more than welcome to join any time, Matt. We, we've said that numerous times, and it is true every single time. Agreed. I can just be your Howard Finkel. Like, every week. I'm not even here for the actual episode. I'll just send over an intro for you, <laughs> there and, you go. and do it that way. I can just be your hype man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to those two gigs. <laughs> That'd be funny. But yeah, as you mentioned, we're talking about backlash. It is as Alex is astute as ever within a few hours of this. So it's truly a jam session today. We're really pushing it in. Um, but it's a small card. There's only five official announced matches, which you would think would give each match time to breathe. Um, so we might be in for something different. But it's how do I say this? For me, this is a very on its face telegraphed pay-per-view. Not one that I'm like super stoked for. It's so the, of, in, the interesting thing with you saying that is how many I'm going to get right. Because I haven't followed yeah, anything yeah. to do with WWE since Roman Reigns left after WrestleMania. I couldn't tell you, other than what happened at Mania, I yep. couldn't tell you who the current champions are. I have no idea what's going on. Um, it's just, it's, it's interesting. I remember, I think it was Matthew who was saying how uh, there was some that had been said about Roman Reigns, that you'll miss me when I'm gone. The, yeah, the, irony, the irony is, is that not only do I, I'm not even gonna say that I miss him, it's just that I don't care about WWE at all at the moment because the yep. villain's gone. That yep. the big that big story is over. I'm like, oh, well, I don't need to watch it now. The story's done. This is it basically is. what this is. This is like the slump after End Game. This is no, exactly, that's exactly what it is. It. Hmm. Yeah. It, it's that weird time where okay, you've you've finished this insane epic saga, and and unfortunately, the the come down is real, right? You've been you've been riding this roller coaster. Yeah. And if you think of it as Roman saga, you've been riding this roller coaster for nearly four years. And yeah. you saw the ending. Like, you wanted that ending. You're not upset you at did. the ending of the story you got. But nope. now nope. now you have to start a new story. And a, a beginning is paced differently than Act 3. Um, right. And so you've got to sort of you got to plant seeds. you got to build. You know, in sports, you would call this a rebuilding time, right? Like that's yeah. really where they are. And and let's also be very clear, the injury bug at WWE has really forced them into a lot of rebuilding because Rhea Ripley is out injured for months. Seth Rollins. Seth uh, Rollins. Turns out Seth Rollins needed surgery on that knee. Um, and that's yep. why he was truly limping and in pain and limited at WrestleMania 40 and still did an incredible job. Um, yep. You know, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre. CM, Drew McIntyre has been injured for three years now, though. But uh, CM Punk yeah. still on the shelf. So, you know, you're, a lot of main event talents are hurt right now, right after Mania. Right. And so that, again, is like, okay, next man up mentality. But you're still in that, okay, we need to establish these next folks. We need to start new stories and unfortunately it feels like they had to start a lot more new stories than they planned to oh my god all at yeah the same time. yeah the the good thing they've got going for them though is the box office appeal um like this right. crowd this crowd today in france 
if SmackDown was any indication, is going to be one of the best crowds and is going to probably elevate this show way above what it deserves to be. Um, and that's the thing. Yeah. They can see sellouts. They can steep. They can still spotlight really hot crowds. So they're not going to completely lose momentum the way that they could have. Um, no, I, but I it think is a- them having the pay per view in a different country is what's going to yeah. carry the momentum of the crowd forward. Is that they're like, oh, this is so cool. Like you've got, sure, it, it will sell out because it's it's something that doesn't often happen in France as opposed exactly. to exactly in in the states or even in Canada where. Oh, WWE are coming through in a month. Yeah, I'll catch them next time. Like you know, it's going to happen again. Whereas yeah. France, make, yeah. like, they don't get a random raw. They don't get a SmackDown. Like they no. might get a pay per view no. every couple of years. So you know that no matter who's on the card, it's going to sell. Alex, yep. this is the very first PLE ever in France. Yeah, the very so- first ever. Last night was the very first SmackDown ever in France. Like they are. They are so hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they so were point, un- my, my, real. Right, So you've, you've made my point harder than I ever exactly. did. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think, too, like, also, but, I mean, they just did a million-dollar house show in London a month yep. ago. Like, yeah. and, and it's not necessarily because they filled it with more fans. It was still roughly, like, 16,000-plus, but what they've learned... And and we're seeing it in the states too. Is they're they're getting ten to sixteen thousand people, which is amazing. AEW would be like Tony Khan would be selling his father for that, but um, but they're charging higher ticket prices. So they're they're seeing massive gains in in their revenue without actually having to. Um, worry about outdrawing the previous time they went to a market yep. because the product is so hot. They did this right. from 98 to 99. If you look at 98 to 99, which is, you know, Attitude Era, some of the hottest yep. of all time, their revenue actually went down. Sorry, their attendance went down a little bit in the back half of 99, but their revenue was still up nearly 25, 30%, depending on the month. Because they had, yeah. they had started to increase ticket prices, so business is strong and business will remain strong for WWE for the foreseeable future. Very well said, and it's just I watched SmackDown last night. Despite just the crowd, the crowd was phenomenal. I mean, it was rabid crowd, which was great. Um, the show was very well booked, very very well booked from top to bottom. It was very like I looked at this and said. Okay, the gears are turning again. This feels like we're we're shaking a little bit of the brake dust off because I will say ever since the Raw after Mania when Cody and The Rock had their moment in the ring, it has been just really like trudging through with a couple moments of glimmer here and there like Sami Zayn and Chad Gable. Other than that, meh. Last night, though, you got taste of things to come and you're like, all right, like... I love the idea of Carmelo Hayes and Bobby Lashley, but get probably locking horns real soon because they threw Carmelo to Cody during the draft and Melo looked good because he, he is good. He's great. But I'm like, okay, he just got beat. Now what do you do to bounce him back? And yeah, Bobby Lashley and Carmelo Hayes is the feud. I didn't know I wanted until I saw it on screen and I'm like, yes, yes, that's it. Give it, give it, give it. The women rocked their tails off last night in that opener. I mean, that was, they must have worked to the crowd because they were just solid, just, you know, frantic energy, really good, no missed spots, no lulls, nothing. It's just excellent. So I'm, I'm well, very excited. And, and, and think about that booking, Joe. They, yeah. Triple H and Creative, yep. were so smart. And they said, we want the women to have yeah. the biggest spotlight possible. So what did they do? They put them on first when the yeah. crowd was going to be at its absolute apex, right? Yep. And they they understood that the crowd is going to help elevate this moment because of the energy level. And so yeah. they're like, what are we going to put on here? Did they put the RKO show with Kevin Owens speaking French? 
No. Did they put no. AJ and, and Cody out there? No. no. They were like, we're going to spotlight the women's division and we're going to get eight women cheered for at once. And that's exactly what happened. And that is the difference in booking philosophies between AEW and WWE. That is a very experienced booker um, and yeah. former wrestler understanding the crowd psychology. And it was great because that is it. You talked about Carmelo Hayes. Alex, now is actually a great time for you to check out WWE because there are a lot of fresh talent coming in and yep. you get to be there from the beginning with them and actually see progression and make them your own guy. And Hayes is a can't miss kind of talent right now that's on the rise. Plus, they've got to build two pay per views at once, right? Yeah. They've been building Backlash, but King of the Ring, Queen of the Ring in Saudi Arabia is a few weeks away. So, Alex, yep. they're doing two tournaments to crown King and Queens of the Ring, bringing back an old concept um, that yeah, makes I used, to, I used to love hate. the King of the Ring tournament. It I, was great. I never remember that. Was it all done in the same night, or was it all yes. done? Yes, sometimes it used to be uh, done in the same night. Were. I was at 1995 King of the Ring, maybe the worst pay per view of all oh, time. Man, um, man. It was awful. So I've been the one. So now, Alex, though, what they're doing is they're they're having the matches on weekly TV for the first couple of rounds, and yeah. then I think they're either going to have the finals or both semis and finals for both tournaments at Saudi Arabia. So that's how they're they're doing it this year. But you've got to do both. You have to build both shows yeah. Yeah. at the same time and they're both in different stages of storytelling, which is interesting. Like you're you're really you're watching multi-layered round robin style storytelling on weekly TV, yeah. which from a writer's perspective is fucking cool. Sorry for cursing, guys. Um, oh fuck, we don't care. We don't I <laughs> I, but but my dad my dad would uh, be upset if I he heard me cursing on the air so I tried not to um, that, until it's fair. too much fun not to. Um, that's but, yeah. very fair. Um, but here we are. Yeah, we got five matches. So we should been we starting, should be able to get through it today. <laughs> they've been starting King of the Ring that way since like '99. It's been you know right. yeah a few yeah. matches and then the finals. So, but yeah, we got five matches. Um, I say we start with the one that's just the least interesting period. I don't think it will open the show. They're going to take a note from last night and open up hot. But this one, I just want to get out of the way. Um, I'm so curious. What, what, is, what to your mind, Joe, is the least interesting match? Oh, KO and, and Orton versus the new bloodline, Solo and, and Tom. Really? Oh, fuck this match. I don't have, give a shit. Have you, not been, have you not been enjoying the new bloodline? They suck. They suck. They suck. It is like why? What what, it, what is it about it that's not clicking for you? I'm Solo curious. is not enthralling. Solo is not. He's not convincing as this fucking you know de facto tribal chief or whatever. He is absolutely not. Toma hasn't spoken. I'm interested to see how he moves in the ring. It's been a long time since I've seen him in New Japan, but like oh god, I I miss Roman Reigns in the worst way possible. And the one thing I want to say before we start this one is the draft was abysmal. It was abysmally boring. The draft was underwhelming. I agree. It was the so draft was terrible. Underwhelming. And like, so why why was it underwhelming? Because like, because again, no I one moved shows. No one moved shows. I, it was basically like so they he, all stayed here's on the their thing. shows. Is it is it underwhelming because no one moved shows, or are they just re resetting that these sh or like in kayfabe? Is the GM saying, no, I need these people and you want your people. So ultimately we keep a lot of the people that we think are important. Well, no, they would, they, would, right. they, would, they would do the idea of a pick and then they would be like, the announcers would work like overtime. Be like, oh my God, what a great pick. You want to keep, sometimes you got to keep your talent on your show. And I'm sitting there going, if I hear that line one more time, I'm going to lose my mind because it was just very underwhelming. I'm like, this is your turn, chance to truly shake things up and and right now with the injury bug and the and the sophomore slump after mania this was the time and the first thing i would have done immediately is get the bloodline off the same show as cody they are so ineffective with the guy at the top who beat them 
just walking around in the clouds happily. Like, it's just awful. It, it does seem to relegate them story-wise to a, a lower position uh, if, where they're not, if they're not trying to go back after Cody immediately. Yeah, they're nothing. They're nothing. Well, and, and, then and that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of part of the question, right? So what, the, what they're doing, Alex, basically is like Solo is taking over the bloodline. Solo has brought in another member of the family, a guy named Tama Tonga, who's been in yeah. New Japan for about a decade and a half. It is a great talent. And what Solo yeah. has done is Solo is basically taking over and saying, I'm going to go fix what wasn't fixed when Roman was in charge. So the first guy he's attacking is Kevin Owens, who is a long time bloodline target. So yes. I would not be shocked if after Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, you're going to get another former bloodline target that they couldn't keep down. That Solo is going to be like, no, now that I'm the guy, I'm showing you I can get business done. So from a storytelling perspective, there is reasons, Alex, that they are in this feud. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know that I disagree with you. It, the challenge sometimes is you can't flip rosters too much because then you've literally just moved Monday night to Friday nights. Um, and they, 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 they should have made some serious shakeups, though. I'm sorry. They did not LA do a lot of should have went to Raw. LA Knight should have could have gone to Raw. Raw would have been great. Um, yep. They really, they really didn't shake things up, and I think that's no. what made the draft so underwhelming for the majority of folks. Um, I, the timing was correct because they literally overlap it with the NFL draft, which is why you do it at the end of April. But I almost yep. think this is a victim of their own success of storytelling, where they do have so many stories that they are telling that are in various stages right now that they yeah. didn't that they're excited about behind the scenes that they didn't feel like like derailing stories midway through to yeah. shake things up what they, they did do is they made some interesting call-ups from nxt though that, that was, was great the that was the only part. those were the only saving graces of the draft because Absolutely. whoever the idiot was that said hey let's do a a camera like an NFL war room with each GM and a bunch of jamokes that no one's ever heard of was so stupid. And the, it just, a, it, I, I applaud a swing. It was a swing and a miss, but I applaud brutal. a swing. The thing is, yeah. is it could have been really good if it had worked, right? Like yeah, it's yeah. one of those and things that they're not going to know if it doesn't sure. work until they try it and Correct. it doesn't work. Right how, now, how many WWE. Times, how many times do you say that? Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Right now, WWE is being carried by two guys who cannot wrestle and who are doing the best promo work of their life whenever they needle each other in Drew and CM Punk. They are the thing to watch. And I'm hoping we get one of them tonight in, in France, just as an appearance. Well, but, but to your point, Joe, that story has been building for almost six months now. Yep. So, like, that story should be what's carrying it because it's been going for six months. That yep. is that is that is a story that's reaching its boiling point. Um, yeah. Whereas so many other things are still simmering or or on their way up. But yeah. so you want to start with Randy Orton. And so our. Yeah. KO so. All right. My prediction. And Tama Tonga. Go ahead. My prediction. Tama Tonga gets the pin on Kevin Owens. Uh, I, I agree a thousand percent. That's yeah, exactly my got a spotlight well. Tonga. You've yep. got a KO seems to be the sacrificial lamb all the time. So, I mean, he's going to take it. Orton's going to remain hot. I'm not going to say it's going to be bad in ring. I just, I really have no interest in this. And Paul Heyman is doing his very human best to like sell this as big deal. And it's just, oof. It's so brutal. I, my my outside guess is that yes, the blood the new bloodline wins. Jacob, I Fatu. think there's going to be a. I think they either they debut a new member. I think that's a yep. possibility. Yeah. But I also think you could get a town down under interfering on the bloodline's behalf to keep the RKO a town down under feud going this time oh. for the tag titles and spin no. them off. No, I think you could. I think you could. Though. The thing is, if you do it that way, then you've got Kevin Owens and Randy Orton spinning away from the bloodline in a valid 
way if they're like, hey, you cost us this match, we're coming after you and your right. titles. Yeah, and that, well, that gets way the you... win. Well, yeah. gets the win and they build up, plus you have a way to spin them off into another feud and and you have a, a legit threat to the champions to either build these new champions or get the titles on RKO. So I, is it I RKO that was R- RKO KO. No, it's I, R-K- right now it's R K O. <laughs> it's R K O. One of my one of my I I saw something somewhere about R K Owens, but it was R K O dash W I N S is a pun on Kevin or K O. Yeah, See, and I that better. made me laugh so much. That's so much better. As I, it Owens. should be R K Owens. R K Owens is the better team name. I agree. It rolls off the tongue. Yeah. Alex, for the smash that you know nothing about, what are you picking? Uh, purely because I, um, what you had just told me about the storyline, I'm going with the bloodlines. I don't think you can have it, have them establish and then lose almost immediately. Yeah. Especially after I saw something about Solo Sokoa has finally broken his 41 match losing streak. Yeah. <laughs> Although, ironically, because he's just broken the losing streak, that would make me think, huh, I wonder if they're going to make him lose again. No. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh... No, no, but no. yeah, uh, the coin picked R.K. Owens. <laughs> well, All right, there you go. Coin starting wrong. I like yeah, but, uh, you watch the coin right. be right because the um, the, like R.K. Owens win by the EQ or something. Yeah, that's true. Could we with um, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think of that. Um, what's the next one you want to jump to, Matthew? Well, why don't we keep it in the tag teams? Let's go to uh, the, the Women's Tag Team Championship. All right. This which one way more not, excited. Not defended. Not defended at WrestleMania because it was they, they were building towards this match yep. with the six women match at WrestleMania. So yep. we have the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kairi Sane versus yep. Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair. Uh, Joe, we'll, we'll keep doing the same same pecking order. So go ahead, Joe. Okay. Um. I think this is a telegraph match as well, but I'm very excited for it. Bianca worked her tail off last night. So did Jade. So, so did all four of these women. And it was just red hot. Um, I think this is the emergence of the women version of the mega powers. You're going to get Bianca and Jade taking the titles here. And it's not going to hurt the Kabuki Warriors. They've had a good little run. Um, Jade gets a really strong win. She gets a really, really strong pin here. I don't know who. I think either or will suffice, but she gets the pin. There's no question. See, I, I'm i going to disagree with you slightly because okay. I, I agree. I think Jade and Bianca win. Yep. Um, I think Jade is about to go for the pin, and then Bianca tags herself in and gets the pin herself because Ooh. this is all leading, folks. Oh, definitely. This is all leading to a Bianca Belair heel turn with Bianca versus Jade, probably at SummerSlam. Um, so, so I think you start seeing, I think you start planting the seeds for four or five months from now with Bianca yep. being like, I'm going to go in and steal this pin. But we, but we won. We won together. You and me, yeah, girl. Right? It's all good. Um, yeah. and, and that's it. You know, look, they're, they're sorority sisters and everything. So... Like, but I think that's that's where the the nuance in the storytelling goes. What about so you, you think Alex? Bianca over Jade going heel. Uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Bianca has needed to turn heel for over a year. Yeah, um, yeah I agree. And she was on her way until Jade came in. That's so true. I think that's really true. I think she started I showing way more Bianca. She really did. She really did. All right, Alex, over to you. Yeah, you I think it? my my money would be on Bianca and Jade yeah. taking the uh, the belts. Definitely. For for no reason, the I feel like you don't really have anything to Jade to doing anything at the moment. So you may as well yep. have her debut win a belt almost immediately, and then that way you can spin her into a story with, like you said, Bianca. Yeah, exactly. Well, we and I also fans. think. Yeah, go mm-hmm. ahead. Go ahead, Joe. No, you have her in a story with Bianca. You have her red hot. You have them. What I what I think this is is a rare opportunity for the women to have an actual tag team 
that can dominate, like tear down the house, dominate opponent after opponent for a while. Not, you know, it's what I wanted with Ronda and Shayna, but we're going to get it in spades here. It's just going to be a brute force women's tag team that just wallops everybody. By the way, because then they they can lose when they finally implode, right? Yes, mega powers implode. Mega powers explode or or implode. Yeah. Or explode. Yeah. Yeah, That's what's going to happen for sure. They haven't technically specified this in the new post-draft era but in theory the women's tag champs can go to any brand yes so that's another reason you give jade the belt because you are building this mega star and suddenly this mega star can go anywhere so imagine her because she she was going everywhere when she was a free agent so now right. you can sort of call back to that And they can defend the titles on NXT, they can defend it on Raw, they can defend it on SmackDown and sort of get her even more exposure where she's kind of everywhere for a couple months. So that's another reason to do it. Ask yourself, why are the women's tag, the women's tag, the only title that gets to go to multiple shows? Because there's not enough meat, there's not enough tag teams on individual shows. They well, didn't put themselves in a friend, situation for it. You see the long-term plan, don't you? So the long-term no. plan is they're going to introduce a secondary singles women's championship on oh, yes, one yes, brand. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Kind of like the North American the, women's champ, yes. So, so the thing they're doing, Alex, is an NXT, because NXT is kind of the laboratory for WWE. Yeah, and they're um, amazing. So they're doing a secondary women's singles championship. They're doing a women's North American title that's going to get a ladder match to determine the the inaugural champ. And if that goes well, then they will bring some version of that to the main roster. But that's when you have the women's tag team division will be on one show and you'll have a singles secondary champ on another show to further give the brands a little bit more identity then. Because then you have yeah, it'd be like a women's intercontinental champion. Exactly, you'll get a women's intercontinental champion is probably where they're actually going a couple months down the line. Um, so that's the long term plan for all this. So we'll see. Yeah, it has potential. It really does. But I like the idea of a very strong women's tag that can just you know go around and crush people. Yeah. for a while. Two women power trip. Two women power yeah, trip. You said yeah, it exactly. It. Two women power trip. Yeah. This is Hopefully, no one pulls their quad. Oh, Joe, why'd you have to put that into the ether, dude? Hey. Why? Why it. did you have to put that into the universe? I hope not. I'll be so angry tonight if that occurs. You know, you'll be even angrier if Austin choke in the playoffs, too. Oh, yes. That's okay. My Sixers choked in the playoffs, so I feel Dude, good. it's – I think Boston's cooked. I, I don't – I don't know. The bigger story, I can hear it. In the, the wrestling booker in my brain is like – the bigger story is, oh, my God, Toronto's made it after 50 blah, blah, blah years of blah, blah. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Sorry if any of you are from Toronto. Don't give a shit. The Leafs is a stupid mascot anyway. Oh, well. <laughs> Joe, I want you. To, I, I just want you to know that yeah. I really appreciate you checking every box for what Canadians imagine Northeastern American <laughs> hockey fans are like. You very I really welcome. want you to know that. I'm very. <laughs> I'm so happy you checked those boxes. Thank you for for holding up our end of the bargain. Uh-huh. Um, I would like to move on to, and I'm going to go in terms of heat. I would go okay. next with Damian Priest versus Jey Uso. I think that's next up in terms of heat. Um, Unfortunately, I would agree. Yeah. So, Joe, this is Damian Priest's very first title defense after cashing in Money in the Bank at WrestleMania last month. Again, yeah. they are completely, without Seth Rollins, without Drew McIntyre being able to go super hardcore, without CM Punk, Yep. They are literally rebuilding the main event scene from scratch on Raw yeah. right now. Without Dominic Jay- Mysterio, too. Really, in, oh, in a wrestling capacity. 
Al Dominic just needs to be on the on the outside. He can still take a punch. Um, yeah, yeah. Just put Becky but I mean, in front of not... him. But he, yeah, he can't. He so so. Who do you have for Damian versus Jay? This was the hardest one for me to call, only because interesting. It was. It is. Um, I don't think you cut Priest off at the legs. I think also there's a reason. You know, he's the first ever Puerto Rican champ. He's and, not. Or he's the they, they tell, he's the what? He's the second. Pedro Morales. Okay, he's the second. Right. My bad. I apologize. That is great disrespect. How dare you? <laughs> so um, <Blast>. no. <laughs> the good so he, name of Pedro Morales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's he's the second, but it's been a very very long time, and Damien's got a lot of potential. He's just starting to break up the Judgment Day, pretty much. He's starting to, I'm, in my terms, I think he's starting to go face. I think he's a slowly building to a face turn, which we'll see if it works or not. The thing is, it was interesting to put him with Jey Uso because Jay's a made man. He's a made man. He is one of those guys that is a rare talent that he will remain hot whether he wins or he loses. It will not derail his momentum whatsoever. The Yeet thing has got everyone, you know, captivated, including myself and Pat. Um, oh my God, Pat McAfee. And then you've got the bloodline. Whenever that starts to soup up to like high octane level, you're going to input Jey Uso back into that mix again, probably with Jimmy reunited. And so, like, Jay's always got a vehicle. He's good. He's he's made. He's he's up. His part. His spot in the card is going to stay. Hence the main event part. Damian Priest, on the other hand, this is very much a very make or break type of situation. It shows one that the um you know the money in the bank matters, and they're not just jobbing it to John Cena for a couple years in a row, and two, that they can make a new true star somebody who's really grinded to get there for about 10 plus years. And he's got a lot of potential. He's good. He's a good promo. He's really good in the ring. He's got a great look. So, I mean, you don't cut Damien off at the legs yet, but as far as what happens, I say the judgment day interfere and it goes poorly but somehow Damien recoups and, and wins it on his own, despite the fact that his team almost costs him it. And that's only because he said under no circumstances does he want any help on uh, Saturday with, with the J. He wants to do it all by himself. So that just means ding dong, hello. They're going to, you know, automatically come and interfere for sure. So I think Damien retains. In a hell of a match, but it won't hurt Jey Uso whatsoever. I, you, you and I are in agreement again, Joe. Look at us. Yay. I think this is the most we've ever agreed on one of these previews. It um, is. I think the word you are using for Jey Uso that that encapsulates what you're describing is Jey is over with the audience. Very, very. When you are over you can put up a great fight and still lose. Yep. And you can, Jay is over and Damien needs to get over and Jay Correct. can help get Damien over. Yeah. Um, Jay. And, and I think that's exactly what this match is for. I love your idea that, that judgment day comes to help and almost cost Damien the belt. And yep. then Damien pulls out a win and Damien can say, I told you, I don't need you. I can yep. do this on my own. Um, and, and I, I would argue you turn this guy face eventually. Like the again, what's to hate about Damian Priest? You nothing. laid it all out there. Nothing. There's nothing to boo about this man. The only nope. reason I was booing him is because he was beating up my favorite mascot in our truth, and yeah, now he doesn't exactly. do that anymore. So right. what is there to boo about Damian Priest? Nothing. So, yes, I, I agree. And you don't know how long Rollins is out. He's probably out a few months. They so said build eight that months. in another baby face. For they said eight months. Meniscus? They, they Usually said that's upwards. an ACL tear. I wasn't sure. I don't know. They said it was upwards of eight months because he needed the surgery bad. A long time. Oof. 
Oof. I know. He probably hasn't um, done himself any favors by not getting surgery, right? Yep. Yeah, he he could have made that tear worse at Mania. Yeah, um, and they said Rhea is outwards of upwards to six months. I mean, shoulders shoulders take a long time to heal. Yeah, of course. Shoulders are are brutal. Um, don't don't hurt your the ligaments near your joints, gents. Those are that's that's real tough. Um, stretch every day, just a little bit every day. But yeah. um, there's our health and wellness corner for the podcast. <laughs> our PSA. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm with you. I think it's Damien. Uh, Damien's going to retain. To your point, it's too early to to hurt his reign and yeah. to, to derail him. Uh, Jay doesn't need a title. Jay's got no. the yeet. Jay's going to. Jay's got merchandise money. He doesn't need a belt. Um, He'll be going Alex, for a US you title on? eventually. I'm I'm in the same boat. Like I, even before Joe was started talking, I wrote down Damien Priest because I just don't think you give someone the title after Mania have him hold it for a month and then first defense they lose it right. that doesn't seem to be um triple h's bag is that he doesn't seem to want to just have no. them like have a 10 minute reign right like right. As, as good as those are if you're trying to build up damien priest and you're you're in a pretty dire situation with everything you don't need to have um jay uso as a champion despite I'm sure he'd be a good one but he you're going from a character that's not too dissimilar to what you've already had with seth Rollins. Right, exactly. I mean, maybe he is different, I, but from what I've seen, I it, other than the appearance, they both seem to be very similar in presentation. I think, to your point, Joe, I don't think Jay is going for the U.S. title. I or think we're going to see. I think we're, we're seeing Jay for the Intercontinental. Imagine another match between Sammy and Jay. Yeah, for that IC title. Um, but they're both faces. Now you put the audience in a real position where they're like, yep, they're, they're like brothers now. And now they have to fight each other for a prize. Like mm-hmm. that's to me that that's money right there. Yeah, um, absolutely. Well, gentlemen, I want you to check your watches because if you do, I think you will find it is tiffy time. Hell fucking the, yes. The next match to talk about is the WWE Women's Championship match which is Bailey versus Naomi versus the woman who is absolutely on a rocket style ascension Tiffany Stratton and the reason this match has more heat than Damian Priest and Jey Uso is because of Tiffany 100% so, Joe 100%. I'm, I'm oh. giving, give you the reins here, my friend. Thank you. Okay, so um, Tiffany is on a tear and an upwards ascension, like you said. Great choice of words. Just like L.A. Knight was at, a, you know, months prior. And where L.A. Knight, they're starting to try to regain some of his heat. Some of their booking decisions really derailed him and hurt him, like, questionably. Tiffany is, in my opinion, the in-ring successor to Charlotte Flair. Everything she does is completely perfect and crisp. There's no flaws in her game in the ring. Her mic work is really good because her character suits the type of mic work she can do, and she'll probably grow over the years. Now, it may not be Triple H's bag, but I'm going to completely throw it out there. If there's any title change on the, well, you know, if there's any reason to hot shot a title, it's right now. It is Tiffy time. It doesn't no matter where the hell in the world you are, whatever pay-per-view, whatever country, do it. I know Bailey just won it. I know it's been a long story. You know, it's a success thing. But here's the deal. Bailey's been there. She's done it. It's more about the moment at WrestleMania, getting that validation, getting that vindication against damage control. She does not need to have a long ass title reign. Um, This is a situation where the champion is tailor made to lose and not look like a chump. Tiffy time, all freaking way, all day. Do it. Don't be cowards. Do it now. Because if you say, oh, well, she's going to win money in the bank and make it, you know, a pink briefcase with Ryan's, who gives a shit? Do it now while she's hot. 
she's LA Knight hot right now, like LA Knight was going into Saudi. Do it. Please do it. I think this will be the match of the night, by the way. I think this is going to, well, I shouldn't say match of the night. It will be the, the semi match of the night as far as quality. But yeah, I unfortunately, Naomi eats the pen, and that's fine with me. It serves its purpose. You can have Naomi and Bailey feud over, you know, they can have the loser's poll. But Tiffy goes on and she goes on a nice little tear. I And then I think when Charlotte is ready, you bring her back to go against Tiffany um, and get Tiffany more over if Charlotte does it right. Yeah, Tiffany all the way. So I... And I agree with you. I think they're going to build the Tiffany versus Charlotte because Tiffany yep. has gone on interviews. She was on like yep. Chris Van Lead. I saw a clip on TikTok yep. of like saying Charlotte was her inspiration to get into pro wrestling. Yeah. She um, only trained for eight weeks. She says, oh, my God, yeah. I really like that girl. And I can't believe that she's such a badass on screen. I'm going to go do that. If she trained for eight weeks. So, so I think. I don't think they're pulling the trigger on Tiffany because I actually do think she is the perfect person to win money in the bank this year. I really do think she is the perfect person to hold that, that distinction. Um, yeah. And if, if you just remember Carmela, Carmela was fantastic with that. money. In the bank. There's Bella. nothing, there's nothing like a super cocky bratty heel holding yeah, that, that briefcase. Um, so I think, I don't think they pull the trigger, but I think that is, I don't even think Tiffany was going to be in this match three right. weeks ago. I, right. I think the crowd has put Tiffany in this match. Yeah. Um, and I think that she's in there with two competitors who will do a lot to keep elevating her. This is, this is Tiffany Stratton going to grad school is this match. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, she's not ready to be the champ and to carry the division, but this is how she gets a taste of what that will be like with two veterans. So I think Bailey wins. I would, I would kind of love if Naomi took the title, if like Yawn. damage control, you know, if the damage control cost Bailey and they're like, well, we lost all of our belts, so we're not going to let you hold yours. Um, yeah. But I could also see like, I, because they've been doing a feud with Naomi and Tiffany, so you can sort of keep this three, three-way three feud going if Naomi wins. Um, but I think Bailey takes it. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet on the champ, as it were. Um, what about you, Alex? For these three, are, is this a pick for you? I Honestly, I went with Bailey for the exact same reason as I went with Damien Priest. I just don't think they're going to change it that quickly. When especially with what you're saying about Tiffy being an ideal build-up for uh, Money in the Bank. Mm. Also, the crowd in Europe loves Bailey. Like, guys, guys, they love Bailey. They are going to be singing songs to Bailey throughout this entire freaking match. <laughs> like, yeah. She's, for her to have a big victory lap in Europe is only going to help her reign so i and i think bailey's in a position right now to be the anchor of the women's division on smackdown you got a lot of younger talent and a lot of talent coming over that needs to be established so similar to sort of becky and nxt and even becky now on raw they're sort of giving veteran champs an opportunity to help elevate talent that they work with so Mm -hmm. i think that bailey keeps it to be that kind of champ for a few months okay so here we are, gentlemen. The what would the coin say? Oh, oh, uh, the coin point. also went with Bailey. I mean, I say coin, but the rando went with, with Bailey. The rando went with Bailey, okay. No, we're calling it the coin. It's still the coin. Right. I believe in the coin. I like coin. the coin. Yeah. The coin. It doesn't matter if it's a real coin. These aren't pay-per-views, but we still call them pay-per-views. Like, come True. On. Um, <laughs> it before also you even tell me who Cody's have three facing sides. at Backlash... I'm, I'm, Go ahead, I'm, Alex. I'm, I'm saying, before you even tell me who's, who Cody's facing at Backlash, for the exact same reason I picked Damian Priest and Bailey to win, I'm assuming that he's going to win again. <laughs> exactly. Uh, however, let me expel upon this. Um, yeah, so this is the story. This is what everyone wanted. 
every single person, including myself, thought this was the right move. End Roman's reign. Get a fresh face. Get a fresh perspective. Get it on there. Okay. Cody finished it. We're all extremely happy. I sound ecstatic right now. And it's I, I am ecstatic. I, I love Cody dearly. However, they got to do something and switch him up. I don't want to see any more freaking walk-ins to the building when he's by himself, smiling to himself. Get, get, cut that shit out. He needs an edge. And I think AJ is going to bring the edge out of him. I was so disinterested in this match completely. This might as well be a house show until the promo last night from SmackDown. It was a strong way to send it home. And I was really happy that AJ brought good promo game. He hasn't brought good promo game since his feud with beat up John Cena. He has not brought any type of fire to his promos since that on this level. And the fact that they're both Georgia boys, they both parallel each other. They've never really crossed or touched is amazing. And I love how AJ was like, yeah, I know what you're going to say, Cody. I know you're going to say you respect me and all that. And I don't need that crap. Like you might be a little younger than me, but I'm still at my peak. I'm not here to be, you know, the old dog, um, you know, bringing the up and comer. And I just thought it was great. The only thing I will say that there was one hole in AJ's promo is that when he said, I came into WWE and unlike you, I wasn't handed everything immediately, which couldn't be further from the truth. He was handed everything immediately from his entrance at the rumble. He was pushed like rocket, you know, superstardom. So other than that little gap in his promo, I think it was a great promo by AJ. A great promo is always by Cody and these two in the ring. You also have the added history of the bullet club on both ends. And I love how they said the two sweet last night. Cause it was the callback. It's kind of like two former, it is two former leaders of the bullet club going head to head. And it's just, it's a match that never was. And now it is. I, Unfortunately, as great as the show as AJ is going to put on in the ring, and same with Cody, Alex's reason is spot on. There is no way in holy hell that you spent four years trying to derail Roman and the guy who takes it off him is going to be a transitional champion his first match. There would have to be a meteor hit in the earth for this to go a different way. I don't disagree with you, Joe. Um, I'm going to go three for three. Cody Rhodes takes it. I don't think this is a one-off, though. No. I think I think these two will wrestle again in Saudi Arabia. Yep. Um, there's a couple ways. The, we're not debating the outcome. We're debating how we get there on this yeah. one. Yeah. So, Joe, book, book the finish. What's the finish of the match? It's definitely not clean. AJ doesn't get a pen. Yeah, AJ doesn't eat a pen. I, I don't know if it's, it's something... Could they bring like age? Could they do an AEW thing where it's a time limit draw type of deal? Has, that hasn't been they done don't in have WWE time for. They don't have time, time limits in WWE. That's time why it hasn't been WWE done in so long. Exist. Right. Okay. I miss um, that. Are you a fan of time limits? Just a, a quick tangent. No. I actually am. I think it's kind of fun. No. I don't like so, them. I, the only time you, I liked like it was when Omega and um, Brian had it. I thought it worked amazing at Grand Slam. Dynamite Grand Alex, Slam. why do you like, why, why are you a big fan of time limits? Because now we, have, uh, we can debate now. We have two sides of the argument. Yeah, exactly. So from a, from a timeline, from a uh, story perspective, if you have a challenger who you don't want to have lose because right. that's, that's part of their story, but you don't want to take the belt from the champion, you just have it run the distance. You don't have yeah. to have it. You know, you don't have to have it have a dirty finish. You can keep, um, you know, say for example, you've got a, 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 a two faces go, going against each other. And you don't want to send either one of them heel. You can have, say, 
John Moxley defending the belt, he tells yep. the Blackpool Combat Club to stay in the back. I can do this alone. But then you've got a returning MJF coming back from injury. You don't want to bury him in his first match, but you also don't want to give him the belt because he's not quite ready for it. Have it go to yeah. a time limit draw and you can say, hey, I, I pushed John Moxley to, to his limit and he couldn't yep. beat me. I couldn't beat him either, but he couldn't beat me. And you can spin right. a story out of that. Whereas when, if, if there has to be an outcome one way or another, then you end up with it, it being interference and it becomes nothing more then than Roman Reigns and, and the bloodline. I would yep. have much preferred at WrestleMania 39 if Cody had just fought him to a draw, but because of the champion's prerogative, Roman walks away with the belt and says, hey, you can beat me. You know, it doesn't right. have to constantly have interference. It adds that one more outcome to a story that doesn't need to, oh, he can't beat him clean or he can't lose clean. Okay, so just don't have him lose. He doesn't win, but he doesn't right. lose either. Well, you know what? Joe, Alex? your rebuttal? Yeah, my rebuttal is it's a cop out. It's a colossal cop out, but so is the DQ too. <laughs> I was going to say that the thing is that the DQ is also a cop out, and I I would argue the DQ is a worse cop out. The DQ is definitely a worse cop out. So, hence the reason why I hate this this storytelling device in wrestling. But it's I suggested it only because it's a cleaner way of keeping AJ strong without having somebody come in on his behalf. But I also just realized that LA Knight's got to be on this show somewhere. Uh huh. So, does he just That's run right. in and cost? He's, he's AJ? there. Yeah. Does he cost AJ the win? And I think well, he absolutely. I, I think if you're going to yeah. want to keep both of them strong and have a reason for AJ to not be included yeah. or not be in the world championship picture yeah. going forward, that's how you do it. Yeah. 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 So, so let me expound my idea on this one for you. Please. I think LA Knight costs AJ the title. Yeah. Then I think AJ costs LA Knight the King of the King Ring. King of the Ring. Yeah. I think they end up having their rubber match at the following PLE, which it, that would put them in June. Um, yep. And then they have their rubber match. Um, and so I think, and that's how that's how Cody would win it. Now the danger in doing that, mm-hmm. and this is really where you get into priorities. The danger in doing that is do you make Cody look weak that he couldn't beat AJ clean, that he needed help from LA Knight. So that could work two ways. Either it makes the champ look weak or Cody has to get in LA Knight's face and he gives him that a little bit of a harder edge to be like, you don't need to help the champ ever. You know, a little bit of a Ric Flair thing of like, I'm the champ. I don't need your help. Yeah, Cody needs Um, an edge. He needs an edge. Does that give him a bit of an edge to be like, I, these fans think I couldn't beat AJ alone. Now I got to prove myself more. Right. Yeah. Cause that's the, that's the danger when a great chase gets the title is now yeah. the reason you were rooting for this guy yeah. is because, because he was the underdog. Now yeah. he's not the underdog. He's not the Red Sox. Now he's the Yankees. So yep. So and no one and everybody hates the Yankees. So like, agree. Fuck the Bronx. But uh, no offense to anybody in the Bronx. One of my best friends, a diehard Yankees fan. But I love how the so, pair of you are saying fuck the Leafs, fuck the Yankees. But no offense to anyone that actually lives there. That's right. I, I mean, I, there are some people who live in the Bronx, but um, there's only <laughs> two I count. Nah. But but yeah, it's just so so that's the danger of doing this with LA Knight, but they could pull it off. I don't know, but he's in France. He had a nothing match on SmackDown yeah. just to give him, just to show he's there and to get the pop from the audience. Cause he's not on the show. I'm um, going to sort of keep his momentum building the King of the ring. So you could absolutely have some shenanigans with AJ tonight is my, my guess. Um, yeah. To weigh in, I say bring back time limits for WWE because I'm tired of DQ finishes. Yeah, they've that's used the that thing. storytelling trope too much. Yeah, um, agreed. I listen. Use a countout every net once in a while. We're great for Gable and yeah. Gunther. Like you can you can make a countout mean something. Um, they just don't do it anymore. So like, 
I, for Alex's point of, it gives me more storytelling possibilities. Yep. Uh, that's why I like having a time limit, but that's that's where I fall. Now, if they overuse the time limit in, yeah, in a year, I'll be like, get rid of the fucking time limit. I, I so. think that's why I like it with AEW. It doesn't come up that often. And it when comes it, up more when, often than you would think. But it, again, how I would rather a time limit than every single one of Roman's matches ending in a DQ. Well, sure. it never ended well, in that, DQs. But that, all right, so I would rather a time yeah. limit than every one of Roman's matches ending because of interference. Yes. So they used to, the way the traveling NWA champion used to work is he would have a 60 minute time limit draw yep, with your local baby face. And at 59 minutes and 59 seconds, you were convinced that your local territory guy was going to beat the world champion, but that damn time limit saved Ric Flair. And so the next time Rick comes around, I know my guy's going to win this time. So yeah. it's a very effective way of building up a challenger to your point, Alex, because you can say if it wasn't for that time limit, if he had five more minutes, he mm -hmm. would have won that title. So it's a really great way to do that without having to hurt your established champion, especially a heel champion. Um, yeah. And Triple H being an old school, you know, historian at this point, I know he knows that. Um, of course. So I'm curious, and it, and if they are looking to be a little bit more sports oriented in its presentation, I would not be shocked if they didn't bring back time limits at some point. But we'll see. I would agree. We did it, guys. We we, we did. We the survived car. backlash. We did it all in like an hour too. Look at us go. I Look know. At how That's actually we impressive. Are. I'm actually surprisingly impressed. Yeah. Well, it's Golf five minutes, everybody. Does anyone have an idea of what they could add? Because I think they could add some ridiculous Legato Del Fantasma like, or LWO BS match. I mean, your, your question really should be, Matthew, what do you think they should add? Because it's established that I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, Matthew, what do you think <laughs> they should add? Does LA Knight get a match? <sighs> Man. Um, no, because LA Knight wrestled last night. If, yeah, if LA Knight a, had not wrestled on the moment, SmackDown, yeah. What you could end up having is you could end up having a surprise addition of somebody like Sami Zayn. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe Sami Zayn versus Bronson Reed gets thrown on there. Oh, like you, you have a, an added bonus. Um, you could I, I think you could do that. I think you could. I'm trying to think who else would be super over in Europe. Right? I would like, not that's refer question. to Bronson Reed as, as a bonus. I I see. I'm not a huge Bronson Reed fan. I'm with you oh, on that. Sucks. I've I have friends who are diehard marks that love Bronson Reed, and I'm just oh, like I, I don't, don't get, get it. it. Please don't get it. Compare him to Bam Bam Bigelow either. I don't like hearing that. No, Ivar. I would compare to Bam Bam Bigelow, not Bronson Reed. Yeah. But um, but I, you could add an IC title match on there. You could have an appearance by Gunther. Um, you will. Have I mean, an you're in Europe. By Gunther. I, th I think you could have an appearance by Gunther. Maybe Gunther has an open challenge um, and somebody comes out. Maybe Carmelo comes out for a Gunther open challenge. I think uh, you get I Gunther in the ring. I, I think you get Cena in the ring doing some PSA. Cena. Yeah, Cena's Ooh, there. He's okay. already in France. Interesting. Oh, is he in France? I did not realize. Yeah, he's like three miles from the arena. He was taking selfies all day yesterday. Hilarious. Okay. Also, so there's your, is there. there's your added Charlotte bonus. Charlotte Flair. Yeah. Cena yeah. and Charlotte, yeah. I think Charlotte taking photos together with fans. Oh, we just happened so, to be strolling through. Yeah. Sure. All right. So Charlotte at so least so is Cena's married to Andrade. Huh? Ooh. What if Cena costs Solo and, and Tama Tonga the match? I was That's thinking That's the only that way possibly. RKO wins it. But I don't think oh, so. Wow. What no, I I'm think still is going, gonna happen I'm still going is, with I, I'm going with what I'm going with. I think Cena's in there doing a PSA and Gunther interrupts. I like it. You know what? Yeah. Book it. Book it, Joe. Yeah, well done. I already booked it. It's good. Way to book so it. So right. that right. saves that's you from nice. adding an extra match because that's a nice little 10 to 12, 15 minute spot. Yeah, there you go. Yep. It's, it's not a match. It's a segment. Uh, it's yeah. an in-ring segment with John Cena. Sure. 
I can't the only wait I don't for want him to, to be Cena like, Leon, you should get a WrestleMania. That's um, what I think he's going to do. That's what yeah. I think he's going to literally do. I think he's going to he's going to do that in every foreign show. He's just going to yeah. go out there and incite the crowd to be like, you should get a WrestleMania. You should get a WrestleMania. He's going to become the ultimate foreign heel by doing so. <laughs> He's gonna be. He's gonna show up at King Queen of the Ring. Riyadh, you should get a wrestle. Like he's gonna do it in every damn uh, foreign oh show. God. You should get a, a new gimmick. Exactly. You get a WrestleMania. You get a WrestleMania. You get a WrestleMania. John Cena, Oprah. Love That'd it. be hilarious. But yeah, and I don't think car. people are like, oh, do, could The Rock appear tonight? Absolutely not. There's no way. No way. Too soon. It's too soon. Too soon. So. Unless he's he wrestling Cena. Cody at Saudi Arabia. Huh? Unless he wrestles Cody at Saudi Arabia, which I hope nah, that's not the case. I don't. You're, the plan, from what I heard, and we're, we're officially done with predictions. We've closed the book on that. Plan, from what I heard, is Rock is lobbying for Cody Rock Mania 41. And then Rock is lobbying for Roman Rock Mania 42. You know, you give a guy $30 million to sit on your board. Suddenly, he wants to make a full-time comeback. Um, yeah. Oh, Alex, Roscoe. any comics news you want to you wanna talk about before we, we head out of here? Nothing that I can think of, honestly. Um, although I did, did you read recently. Blood Hunt yet? No, I haven't read that yet. Oh, I haven't read that yet. I heard it's good. Do you know what you know what I have been reading, which is absolutely nothing to do with comics? Um, Appaloosa. And oh it's really good. I'm really enjoying it. All right. There you go. There's um, there's our there's our wreck for the week is Appaloosa. Yeah. Yeah. I um for for comics, I've been reading, let's see. I've been reading Daredevil. Still pretty good. Um, I've been reading, well, Batman's coming back this week with Zdarsky's next installment of that. That's got to do something soon because it's starting to lose me. Um, let me see. What else have I read? Uh, Wolverine is stellar. And Alex, are you caught up on that? God, no. because... Let, let's ah. just assume whenever it comes to comics, I'm never caught up. Okay. Well, yeah. get caught up, please. <laughs> please get caught up. There's some Marvel Legends For Joe's serious. sake. Yeah, yeah, there's some serious Marvel Legends material there. Oh, okay, I know what we can close on, guys. Wait, are you not caught up on this too, Alex? Of course X-Men not. 97? No, because as soon as you said we're doing Backlash today, I was like, oh, I don't need to watch that today. I'm going to go uh, back to Buffalooza. Uh, uh, oh, Alex. God. <laughs> All right, so anyways, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I thought this was the finale this week because of the way that they promoted it saying the finale on, on the YouTube preview. And there's two more there's two more episodes, which thank God. That's all I'll say. A three Matthew. part finale. They're they're calling it a three part finale. That's what it is. That's uh, what it is. That's what it is. It's a three part finale. That's the promo for it. Uh, um, it was great. It was absolutely great. Alex, find twenty four minutes of your life to uh thirty four spend Oh, was it 34? Sorry. Yeah, they're, they're all 34 to 40 minutes, minutes which makes them even better. So, so go it, ahead and, and it's uh, not you know, while it's you're not eating lunch 30, or something. I'm saying it's not just 34 minutes that I need to find to watch this. I haven't seen anything past episode two yet. Oh, God. Yeah. Find yourself three hours. Watch it. I'm going to say it's going to be closer to three hours. Alex, watch it. I'm telling you right now, episode five is besides... No Way Home and Endgame, the best thing to happen in the MCU. See, that, that's I, quite, I think why I haven't watched it, because you've built it up so much. I'm like, oh, if I watch it now and I don't like it, I'm going to feel bad. No, 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 no. If you don't Hi, like it, Joe, there's something wrong with you. pressured him. No, if you don't like it, it's on you. There's something wrong with you if you don't <laughs> like it. That's all I'm saying. This is so good. Um, I will argue, Matthew, I will say that this week's, I'm very glad there's two more parts. Because yes, I felt I agree. like it was good, but it's not the par that the last seven episodes have been for me. I was reading on Screen Rant the other day. Apparently, they've got the next two seasons are already like greenlit, ready to go. <laughs> like, I know so. they already have the next season, and that makes sense. But 
I'm a little worried that Bo DeMaio had a lot more to do with it than the other brothers who are part of the producing team because this season's magic. Like, I really hope that's not the case. I hope that, you know, he at least, like, storyboarded or whatever, gave them enough to go on for the second season. And we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Let's yeah. enjoy the last couple episodes of this, and, and Alex, someday you'll, you'll watch the whole thing. <laughs> And by the time we get to uh, Summer Slam, Alex will, will have watched it. it. When, when show is no longer, you know, pressuring you to watch it every moment of your life, um, That's right. you'll you'll finally have the headspace to to go ahead and watch it. Yeah, maybe I'll watch it now that now that we're not talking about it anymore. I am going to be CM Punk to your Drew McIntyre, Alex. I am going to be hounding you everywhere to watch this show. I'm going to show up and just ping you and be like, watch the show. Did you see Watch it yet? Did you see it yet? Did you see it yeah. yet? I'm going to just send you memes like from uh, Meet the Parents with um, Robert Tadero just doing the eye point to you. I'm mm. gonna, like, <laughs> you, you have now become a target, my friend. That and you is are fine. going to watch this. I will eventually. It's like yeah. I said that to my friends. Have you watched Clone Wars? You're like, no, I'll get to it eventually. I'm not oh, my God. That. Yeah, that I'm I'm guilty of that in Bad Batch. I'm on Clone Wars season two. Oh, I'm God. if I'm gonna watch anything, I'm probably just gonna start Bad Batch and go from there. Yeah, I heard it's really, I, really good. I watched up through I was into season three of Clone Wars when Lauren and I fell off it. So yeah. I've I've never gone back. And I've heard I yeah. should, but I also, you know, it's so it's just so it's daunting. It's just so inside baseball. Like mm-hmm. there's so much happening that you it feels like I need a PhD in Star Wars lore. Yeah, yeah, no, to, no, it's to daunting follow. though too. There's so much. Now there is, but hey, we're doing this on May the fourth, so this is that very apropos. Say, how about is, we mention that? <laughs> it is May the fourth. It is also free comic book day. Please go out to your local comic book shop yes. and support them. This is the yeah. one of the biggest days of the year for them. Get some free books. Make a purchase, support your local business. It's a yeah. great community gathering spot that does so much and survives on so little margins. So please support them. And today of all days, be kind to the folks um, at your local comic book day shop. They are absolutely overwhelmed and they have been super stressed for over a week now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So give them a little grace, make a purchase, have some fun. Lots of great titles out. We talked about Blood Hunt. There's Deadpool and Wolverine, World War Three, number one. Yep. Yep. Um, the the FCBD book for Turtles is fantastic. Highly recommend oh, it. Um, I need to get it. There's there's so much great stuff. Um, I'm on Joe, dog duty today going? for all the animals in the house. So like I have a buddy going to our comic book store, which is New England Comics, and hopefully he's trying to there grab me some things. But they limit free comic book day, like, you know, freebies too. So hopefully I'm able to get something because unfortunately I can't get out there. And by the time I get out there, everything's going to be gone. Everything is already going to be just picked off the racks. So Alex, before we end up, because you got a heart out in a minute, what what yep. is your shop doing for local comic book day? Uh, I think there's a bunch of sales going on. Uh, so, so you, there is a limit of how many comics you can pick up, but there is also like a bunch of sales going on. It's like, yeah, uh, is it twenty five percent off pack issues under thirty, or is it thirty percent off? Anyway, like it's something like that. So, um, yeah. yeah by, by the time this comes out, the uh, I think the sales are all weekend, so there may still be another day of it. But uh, oh, yeah, nice. it just depends on the I think um, different like so toys are a certain percentage off. Um, Manga is a certain percentage off. I think Star Wars is a certain percentage off too, given the weekend. So, yep. Well, I'm going to be heading to uh, Forbidden Planet. They always do a great job for Free Comic Book Day. I used to work there. I used to work this day. My last day working at Forbidden Planet was Free Comic Book Day. I think that's awesome. At one point, um, so I'm going to be going. They usually have a couple sales. They they always have a great spread. They do a thing though where they they pre bag all the books. So the first ones in line, you get everything, all the adult yeah. titles in one bag. And That's as they, they run out, do. the bags get slimmer. Um, yep. uh, and, and then they they then they fill it with some back issues <laughs> after a while. So like dead stock, it's great. Um, someday, gentlemen, I would love to come on here and have a, a comic book industry discussion about free comic book day. 
and why I believe my hot take is you should never run sales on free comic book day. But that is a topic for another episode. That's what we should uh, do next. We can do. That I am very interested to, in that. So yeah, yeah, we could do an interim on the way to King and Queen of the Ring. I like it. Um, may I do one cheap plug before we we sure, say goodbye? Of course. So I am actually going to be exhibiting at my very first Comic Con on Saturday, May eleventh. Uh, Phillipsburg Ooh. Comic Con in Phillipsburg, New Jersey. Um, it is a great show. I have tabled there for the Heather Antos for a couple of years now. Um, mm -hmm. It is run by a phenomenal teacher named Faith, uh, who runs a comic book club at this local high school. The kids put together the show. They run everything from concessions to the That's green cool. room. They are helpers. They are they are learning about the industry. They get to have great interactions with everybody. You have some local shops show up. It is one of the best run local cons I've ever been to. Um, they treat the guests so well. It is such a great time. So I will be there uh, 10 to roughly 5 p.m. next weekend. Yep. I will be offering writing commissions on the spot. Um, so come on out, and I will I will write a story about your favorite or least favorite character for you for a reasonable that price. That is really with cool. a typewriter. I've never heard of with writing commissioners. I bought a awesome. typewriter. Is it five, a five dollar entrance fee? Uh for Phillipsburg, I'm not sure. I have to double check. Okay. Um, um I, if it's it, yeah, it it is. It, that was that was me trying is, to open okay. you up. That was me trying to open oh, you up sorry. for a conversation about it. But yeah, it is. So it's a $5 entrance fee. Um, <laughs> yep. All the proceeds go to the school. Um, so, um, but <laughs> I probably should have just said, hey, it's only five bucks to get in. Matthew, uh, you fit perfectly on this show. <laughs> because go. we usually miss the mark too. So I love it. Thank you, Alex, for doing that. You're um, welcome. But yes, but, but I will be typing up writing commissions on the spot on a 1981 uh typewriter that i found at a local typewriting spot hey, oh my that's God. just um, fun that's awesome i kind of wish i, could I will have some pre-made commissions i will have some pre-made commissions and then you can also get some commissions from you right there i even i got an embosser made guys like i've got the whole thing ready to go it's gonna be a oh, lot it's awesome. gonna be a great time. Yeah, yeah no awesome. i mean if i wasn't going to a family thing on the 11th. I, I would consider making the trek to New Jersey, and those aren't words I usually ever say. So um, that would listen. Be... You can always DM me for a commission, guys. I'll give you my pricing. I'll send it in the mail. I bought yeah. some like antique-looking paper. It's great. Oh, cool. Uh, who would I make you write? I'm gonna I'm gonna have to think long and hard on this one. <laughs> give you like ambush bug or something. I gotta get come up with something better than that. I'll I'll, I'll figure it out. But yeah, I'm I'm all tapped for final thoughts. Yeah, no, I I have thoughts, but I'm not going to share them because they're, no. they're, they're yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it doesn't matter. So Matthew, we're going to put where we can find you in the show notes. Uh, as as is standard at this point. Um, your trade, your web comics, uh, everything like that. Oh yeah, I'm getting the web comic printed. The first web comic oh. is being printed um, and should arrive on May 6th. I'll have them at the show. Uh, should that everything have gone well at the printer? So that is a yeah. new product as well. Fingers crossed. All right, Cross. much luck, and we can't wait. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys. In the next time. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games. 
you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.